Hi everyone. Welcome to Rose Hip Knits Podcast, episode 109, yes. <laughs> My name is Hannah and I am recording this mostly knitting, sometimes hand dyeing, crochet and other things podcast from Northern Tasmania in Australia. Yes. What else do I normally say? I have no idea. Um, welcome to my studio. I'm back in the spot where I was last time, I think. Um, it is in the morning. Um, it's Friday and um, a bit uh, um, not so used to recording first thing in the morning. But today I, um, I saw an opportunity um, to be able to do a little bit of uh, catch up here in my studio um, while my husband is still at home and then he'll go to work and I have to go in and um, be around for the for the children. So I thought I'll just grab the opportunity and come out here and do a little catch up. So um, I have told myself that I'm going to try to keep this uh, short, um, but um, for some reason I find it very hard to um, to do that you won't believe the amount of editing that I did to my last episode because I was just going on about lots of things I was going on about how I had felt bad about having my um, hand dyeing um, shop open at these times um, if you're watching in the future this is um, April 2020 and we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic so things are a little bit crazy and upside down in the world um but yes I was going on about all these things and then um when I was editing I just thought no uh I'll just cut most of that out because um yes what I mostly want to talk about and what I enjoy is knitting and sharing that with you so um I yes cut a lot of the other stuff around um out I still kept a bit of it um but I tried to keep it at the end so there was a bit of cut and moving things around so hopefully it wasn't too bad um but today I'm here in the morning I'm um I felt like I wanted to record because I love this. I love this time to sit down and talk about the things that I love, which, are, you know, which that's knitting at the moment and hand dyeing. And um, yes, and I, I just feel like I am um, finishing a lot of things or working on a lot of things. And if I don't have these regular catch up, catch ups, then I'll just be. Um, yeah, then I'll, next time I'll record, I'll just have so many things to share with you. And it's just um, hard, both with editing and with uploading when the videos are too long. And I myself prefer the the shorter videos when I watch podcasts. So that's what I'll try to do. And all this rambling now, three minutes in, uh, it's not helping. So um, as I said, my name is Hannah. You can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. Both of those places are a good place to get in contact with me and on Ravelry you can check out all my projects with all the details um, of yarn and needle size and all those things. Um, so yes, Rose Hip Chick in both those places. We have a Ravelry group um, on Ravelry. You can find that by searching for Rose Hip Knits Podcast and in the Ravelry group we have the um, knit along threads for uh, 2020 Aussie New Zealand dyer sock along. Hopefully I got that right. <laughs> so many hashtags at the moment. I'm just, um, yes, finding it hard to remember and putting the, um, the year, you know, in the right spot, the beginning or the end because it differs a bit. Um, so that's, we can find me. That's the Ravelry group. Um, my hand dyeing business is Rose Hip Island and that has its own website, rosehipisland.com um, and the, the shop is full of nice things, um, a lot of sock yarn and mohair silk yarn and if there's anyone out there who um, 
sort of interested in anything and you would like to know how a sock gown and a mohair or different sock gowns, how they go together, I'm always more than happy to send photos of whatever skeins um, you're interested in to combine. And yes, um, yes, I know it's really hard to sort of um, plan and make decisions just sitting there looking at a um, online shop. So I thought I'd mention that. Okay, so today is very different, isn't it? Because I'm sitting here knitting, um, which I normally don't do, but I know that I am so bad at like touching my face and my hair and when I record, I find it really hard to not do something with my hands. So I thought today, because it's in the morning, it's chilly here out in the studio, and to keep my hands busy, I thought I'd bring my big blanket project and just work on that a little bit. I'm sorry if I don't sort of look into the camera at all times. Um, I hope you don't mind. Um, but that's what I'm doing. First, uh, though, I'll let you know that what I'm wearing is my Magnolia Juvenile Jumper mashup that I, I did with my 2018 Advent Calendar yarn for the Christmas Day 100 gram skeins. I had three skeins left of that, so I made this top, um, and the colour work is in the mohair uh, from I think 24. Is it 24 Mile Hollow? Can't remember. It's an Australian indie dyer. Uh, so I combined those two, and I combined the Magnolia pattern by Kimmy Lavard and the Juvenile pattern by someone I can't remember the name. Again, all the details are on Ravelry. And um, if it's anything you have a question about, knitting related mostly, hopefully, <laughs> and just shoot me a message and I'm happy to answer. I had planned to wear a completely different jumper today, a new one. I was in a virtual knit night last night, which I do on, on Thursday, which with some um, uh, lovely knitting friends. And yesterday I spent the virtual knit night, not all of it, but a lot of it, sewing in the ends on my Fenmont cardigan, no, Fenmont jumper, that I completed. It was the first thing I completed in 2020, I think, like 2nd or 3rd of January, I completed this um, jumper. Uh, and it has been sitting, so we're now end of April, so four months, it's been just sitting, uh, waiting for me to weave in the ends. And last night I decided, now is the time to do it, and then I can wear it tomorrow when I podcast. So I got it all done, and this morning I um, put it on, and there was a big hole, like right here. Panic. So I, I tried to sort of catch the um, stitches that I, that I could and there was just one of the strands had just come off and I was trying to figure out if it was because of some pairs or what it could have been and then I thought okay this this jumper was in a bag together with a lot of other projects that still need to have their ends woven in <laughs> um, so then I started panicking and um, going through all the other projects in that bag to see if I could find any damage on them. Couldn't find a sign of anything. So I think what must have happened is that um, one of the strands in the yarn had um, not a fault, but it was a bit weak. Or when I was weaving in ends, at some point, my small um, scissors might have, no, just briefly touched the jumper and unfortunately cut off one strand. I'm not sure what happened, but um, yes, I have to fix that. And it's not in a very good spot um, for making it, making an invisible mend. So I just have to see how I can do that though, because I really like that um, jumper and uh, it's made out of some special skeins of Color Girl Collective yarn that I had, so yes. I'm not wearing that today. Hopefully, I can fix it and wear it sometime soon in the future. Anyway, oh, it, was, it was a bit of a panicky morning. 
and also this morning to make up for no not to make up for going out and leaving my family <laughs> on their own but um sourdough yes don't you worry i have also gone down the sourdough rabbit hole and uh, not very um successfully so i have tried to make a loaf of bread and the whole reason why I started doing sourdough was not because I kept seeing all these sourdough loaves on Instagram. No, I resisted. But then we had a huge apple harvest and I remembered that I had a recipe for a sourdough starter using grated apple. And I thought, oh yes, I need to use up some apples, so I'll, I'll do that. I probably was influenced by Instagram as well. But anyway, I did that. I uh, tried to make a bread, not very successfully. But then... I had all this leftover starter so i started looking up recipes for the starter discard because i hate throwing things out so i've had a bit more success with the actual recipes for the discard so i've made a like a raisin filled brioche which was nice i made a chocolate cake last night and this morning i made waffles and pancakes out of um like an overnight sponge that i made out of some discarded sourdough starter so, um, yes, I, I did that this morning. So I had a nice breakfast. And, uh, yes, it's been a busy morning and it's still early. So now it's time for me to calm down. And, yes, I want to talk to you about my knitting projects. So what I have in my hands, like I said, is my big blanket project. Uh, it is rather huge. This is the Garter Squish Blanket by Stephen West. And I'm using three strands of DK weight yarn, round about DK weight yarn, and 15 millimeter needles. Um, and I have been through all my DK weight or worsted weight stash, um, full skeins, mini skeins partial skeins anything and i've been through all my greens and blues um sorry been through greens and blues and it's quite wide i think maybe it's like a i don't know single bed size wide not sure um and maybe oh, it's, it's not quite a meter in length uh, I'm getting towards the end of my, sorry, greens and blues. I have this project in my Emma bag, which is one of the first projects I made, I think, on Ravelry. And I think it's Sharon Dreyfus or something is the designer. Sorry. She um, had a podcast that I used to listen to uh, early on in the podcast um, world, the knitting world. Um, yes, yeah, she had she had a, a podcast, and this was a, like a mystery knit she did. So I did that. I did my handles differently. They were meant to be knitted handles. Sorry, what's a fluff flowing around? So I only have. Oh, you can't see it like that. I only have this left. <laughs> Show it quickly before it falls down. So yes, that's what I am um, working on while I'm sitting here trying to keep my hands busy um all right so i have finished something for today uh, you will know if you have watched my podcast previously that i take part in the free socks 2020 knit along which is hosted by kia of kia spood um it is a knit along where kia chooses a free sock pattern every month of 2020 that we knit together and the aim of it is to use yarn that you already have so you basically end up end up with free socks <laughs> um so i have completed my january february and march socks and now i have also completed my april socks so this is my april socks and they are called i wrote it down this time Rusu Yuri socks by Tina Ku, I think. I use my own hand dyed yarn. So 
some skeins that I had lying around and um, as you can see it's it's a few issues I guess with these socks first of all there was only one size I think anyway the size the smaller size or the only size that I could make was way too big for me and I can't really go down in gauge because I'm already making my socks on two millimeter needles and uh, my color work is quite loose so um, I knew that they would be quite big but I wasn't prepared to modify the pattern to a smaller uh, stitch count so I just made them um, have a pretty cool heel they were um, if they felt like a challenge to make but um, they were quite fine um, once I made them so the size was one thing the other thing um, is that I mean I like this look but it's not the perfect yarn for color work first of all it has nylon in it and I prefer making color work with a more rustic yarn but then if you make socks you know you have to think about will they wear and anyway I use this yarn because I had it and also because it's very tonal almost variegated um, it doesn't show the pattern very well but I think this is just like a different look and I like this look as well I popped in a pink mini for the flowers at the top I didn't do the beads that are part of the um, pattern for the top I put the pink in well, I probably would have used pink anyway, but the pink made the socks qualify for the Knit All the Colours 2020. 2020 Knit All Colours? I'm struggling with this. I should write it down next time, maybe. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you can see they're big. I washed them and blocked them straight away when they came off the needles because I was really curious to see if I could make them sort of tighten up a bit and make the colour work stand out a bit better. They did um, sort of tighten up a bit, which was good, but when I have them on, they're still quite loose on me, but I think they'll be fine um, more as a slipper sock to put on top of another sock. Um, that's, that's those. So I think, yes, problem with the size, problem with the yarn, I guess, but no problem with following the pattern or anything like that. And um, yes, I'm very happy to have them done. And I am now like, I really, really want to make more color work, but I want to make a jumper. But I feel like I have to finish a few things first. So um, yes, it definitely got me um, back into color work. Well, I don't think ever. I don't think I was ever out of colour work, but I don't have any other colour work projects on the go <laughs> or stranded colour work. Um, so that's my April socks. And I do I do recommend the pattern if you want to try a different type of heel and you want to do colour work. Um, yes, you need to have pretty tight um, gauge unless you have really big feet last look <laughs> so there um some socks uh, that i or these socks that i finished and of course i always have lots of of socks on the go so my other socks and i have shown these before they're not quite finished yet but not far from it and um, they are the rag rug socks and i think i had finished one last time let's see which one this one this is just from some leftover budget sock yarn that I had in my stash. I've done an afterthought heel. So these are rag rag socks by Vicky Vera. Her pattern doesn't have the afterthought heel in it, but I mean that's easy to substitute. Um, so I have had one finished for a while and then I'll try to only work on this when I'm actually like out and about. Like we're not really out and about much at the moment. We're at home self-isolating. Um, but I've had a few times when I've um, had to go into the lab where I work to process some samples and um, sometimes I have to wait for samples to sit in buffers and this is some waiting time sometimes and also there's no one else around so when I have a break there's no one to talk to 
So having some knitting to work on for a little while for a break is quite nice. So I've been bringing it with me to work. Um, and then we went for um, a drive to my in-laws um, one day. Had uh, Went for a bit of a walk, fresh air and um, kept our distance. But we went, um, went on a drive. So then I could work on it in the car. Um, so the second sock is almost like it's just a couple of stripes away from having the um, from starting on the toe, and then I'll put in the afterthought heels. So there will be that will be another completed um, pair of socks very soon. And I can't believe how fast they go. Like it doesn't take many sittings to um, get anywhere on these socks. Whereas with these ones, I sort of made myself do one pattern repeat every every day and I felt like it was really slow going. Um, but these ones, you don't think, you just go, go, go. So I really like those socks. And then, um, because I was talking about the um, Aussie New Zealand Dyer Sock Along that we're doing, um, I really felt like I wanted to cast on a new project that would um, sort of fit into that um, knit along. And I mostly work with hand dyed Australian yarn, but it's at the moment mostly my own. And I don't really, I didn't want to enter my own. Not that I'm entering the knit along anyway, but I'm joining in, I'm participating. But I wanted to use another indie dyer. And um, I had this. Um, Sock yarn from Skein Yarn, and it's her everyday sock in the rose hip colorway. And this was a gift from a podcast viewer a while back, which I really, really appreciated. Um, I received this and a lot of other things, and I've used quite a bit of it as giveaway prices. And um, I kept some for me, <laughs> um, which felt very special. So I've started on a sock using that and um, so there were a few reasons I wanted to do this. It was to do the Aussie New Zealand dye sock along and also um, with Kristen of Skein Yarn, she has the knit all the colours knit along and for April pink is the colour. So like I showed you, I put the pink in on these socks but I wanted to make a, another project sort of more pink. And this, although it has a lot of reds and other, yes, reds and whites, and so it has a lot of pink in it. So I thought that'd be fun to actually use one of Kristen's yarn for her knit along for one of the months. So that's what I'm doing. And I thought, oh, I want to, I'll have a look in my library on Ravelry and see what sock patterns I have to make something that's just, not a vanilla sock, something that will take a bit of time and I will really enjoy working with the yarn and colourway. And just recently, um, I purchased um, the Drippity Drop sock pattern. It's by Kay Jones, who has the Bakery Bears podcast. And I think she had a sale recently and that's when I bought this Drippity Drop sock pattern, I think. And the reason I bought it was because on her podcast, she's been talking about her sock patterns and how she has um, sort of different methods and tricks for her heels and to toes and different things. And I think this was one of the patterns that had her, I don't know if it was a heel method or what it was, but it was something in there that I was interested in trying. So I got that pattern not long ago. And now I thought, okay, this is the, a great opportunity to use that pattern, combine it with this yarn. So that's what I'm doing. It's a drip to drop pattern and even though it's a very very variegated yarn and it's hard to see anything I think that this textured pattern it still makes a difference to the look of it I think it would look completely different if it was just plain knitting and I guess we'll see that when I get to the foot and because underneath the foot it will just be plain stockinette and the top will be this pattern so then we can see like how it, how much of a difference it makes to make this 
first one I started it and I thought after two rounds or four rounds I think the pattern repeat I thought oh do I really want to do this so nice and fast just knit a vanilla sock and just go 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 but now I'm, I'm really enjoying it and I just do two or four rounds at a time and just like really savor it and it's not what I normally do with knitting I'm quite like Like I, I like to be fast and I like to get things done. Um, not because I'm after the finished project, but because I have so many other things that I want to work on. Um, but with this one, I've decided I'm just going to take my time and really just enjoy it. So that's the Drippity Drop, drippity drop Sock. And yes, I'll see what the heel and different methods are like I don't know sometimes you think in patterns that um it will be quite different but there's only so many things oh, there's only so many ways you can knit a sock so sometimes it might not be that much of a difference to other patterns but I don't know I haven't actually read through the pattern yet um but I do like um the textured pattern and yes I like I like the sock And I also like, I mean, I did get it on a on a sale, um, but I do like that I have in some way supported um, Kay and Bakery Bears because I do watch the podcast. Um, so little things like that to be able to, it's not a huge amount for me um, to spend, um, but, you know, if everyone spends a little, little bit on the things that they enjoy, and appreciate you know that will maybe go a long way if there's a lot of people that do it so yes I can't support everyone and I, I watched a podcast recently about this someone was saying that you know they'd, they'd like to buy from every indie dyer and you know every uh, pattern designer but you just sort of have to choose a few and just um, yes you can't you can't buy every pattern out there. You can't buy all the hand-dyed yarn out there. You just have to choose and then maybe, you know, um, change who you support later on and just sort of spread out the <laughs> the support and the love. Um, so I, I try to do that a little bit where I, I can. Um, and how much you can just it varies and depends. And it's, yes, but it, it, it feels nice for me to be able to do something very small and hopefully um, it will make a tiny bit of a difference. Okay. So I think that that is all of my sock knitting. It's not all of my knitting, if that's what you thought I would say. No. Um, all of the sock knitting I'm doing. Uh, and maybe once I have finished my rag rug socks, I will just sort of keep to my drippity drop socks and just slowly make make my way through them well uh, who am I kidding there will be a May sock soon um I don't know when Kia will um announce which what that May pattern will be but yes I'll be definitely working on on that because I've made it this far and I must say that I've like it's been a challenge for me and I've pushed myself to get through these socks I've been happy with all of them and I really enjoy making them and taking part in knit along. But it's not like it's just easy breezy. No. So now that I've um, put so much time and effort into it, I'm definitely going to keep going. Okay, so another thing that I'm working on, and I have almost finished. And I haven't worked on this for a while because I can't decide on how to finish it. This is my... Comfy Cozy Trio Cow that I'm making in some of my hand dyed yarn, sock yarn and other fingering weight yarns. Um, so the Cozy Comfy Trio, Comfy Cozy Trio uh, is a pattern with three patterns in it. It's a cow, it's fingerless mitts and it's a beanie. And it's by the Cozy Up Knits Girls. I have um, a podcast that I've mentioned several times um I used a gray for my main cover one of my 
lonely special skeins that I had lying around and then I've used uh, leftovers from projects that I have made so my red brick colorway that I made socks from my white opal colorway I made socks from my thin coral cup colorway orange coral cup can't remember the name I made a socks a pair of socks for my daughter and this is actually this colorway it's hard to see maybe the this colorway here the white opal has a bit of the sort of red and um yellow in it and then this one the christmas colorway has more of like the pink and turquoisey blues in it and then this pink one is uh, what i used for my love note um, so i can't remember if the colorway this one if it was because of pink or all the pink something with pink um yes so i have now completed the five um, mini skein parts and now I'm doing the just a bit of the grey for a finishing and I started with just a garter border in the pattern there's option of this or making a two by two rib and I feel like this is flapping up a bit so I wasn't sure if that would be the best finishing up here or if I should do the rib or if I do the rib should I then also um change this to a rib so i can't make up my mind so it's just been sitting in the bag waiting um i wonder if i can i wonder if i can try it on it's a good look <laughs> ah okay i think we did it so um i think it, it sits really nicely on you oh, i'm so looking forward to wearing this and um yes i just don't know how to finish it up here so but that's that's that one it was actually a really fun knit and i i can see myself making more perfect project for all those sort of um leftovers and partial skeins and mini skeins so yes so that's um something that i also need to finish up so that I can move on to other things. <laughs> um, another thing, let's just move through the knits now. I can see the time's passing quickly. Um, I have started this last time and I have worked quite a bit on it. This is a flax jumper that I am making out of some hand dyed yarn from my shop and I'm marling them. What I am using um, is one strand of a silver colorway together with my magnolia colorway for one um, stripe and then together with my Pisces colorway for one um, stripe. And that's creating this look. I'm using only the silver for um, all the ribbing. Um, I didn't do a gate swatch and that was probably a bad decision um, I'm making the smallest adult size for my 10 year old daughter um, because I wanted it to be well I didn't want it to be small but I did do a gauge watch and I think I am getting yes I don't think it will be very big I've compared it to one of an, another jumper I made for her by Tin Can Knits the dog star jumper I think it's called um, and this is basically the same size as that and she's growing out of that one um, so it, it is very stretchy and it's quite soft so if it is a bit tighter I think I can block it out a bit and if it is a bit tighter I don't think it will be a problem with itchiness which otherwise can be an issue for my daughter but because it's so soft if it's a bit sort of on her skin doesn't matter um, so I've just kept working on it and you know I have the backup I have the backup younger child <laughs> if needed and um, so really I should get this done um because it's my daughter's birthday in about a month and I wanted to have it for her then um I don't know if I have to make her another one so I think I have another green greeny blue stripe and another pinky purple stripe and then the ribbing and then the sleeves 
and it's it's going pretty quick you know it's striping so i just always go i just i just complete this stripe before i finish um i started with the first stripe to cut the yarn and um sort of join the next color but then i realized that i could just sort of bring the other color up i think i twist twist the yarns every second round to make them sort of just sort of like they're sewn in i can hardly see it on the outside i don't know like in my you know if you take a scissor to this that wouldn't be very good if you get caught somewhere on just that one strand but um yeah i'm not good at weaving in ends so i thought i'll do it that way and hopefully that will be okay so that's that's the umpire And then I have actually started working a little bit on the jumper that I'm making for me. I really enjoyed this one that I'm wearing. So I decided I was going to make another one similar to this one out of um, the 2019 uh, Christmas Day yarn that I did for my advent calendar. So making this one. So that's the colorway from last year. And this is the colorway from the year before. Um, and I don't know, you can see maybe they're a bit similar. I am again making, uh, using the magnolia pattern as a guideline, but with completely different gauge and, you know, have changed my size and everything. But that's what I'm using as the base for the increases and everything. But I'm just doing it without any waist shaping and without any sleeve shaping or decreases, just plain knitting. So I have done a little bit. On that I'm making it a little bit of a looser fit than the one I'm wearing Um, I think it will be good good thing to have in my wardrobe I don't know if you can see the colors it has green and uh, pinky purple and yellow shining through the gray and in real life it doesn't look this variegated like it does on the screen it, it's much more just looks like a dark gray from a distance and then if you go close you see all the colors in there so i have tried to work a bit more on that um i mean it's not super um interesting knitting but i did work on that for a bit as well for virtual knit night last night um and it's fine it's like it's not different to working on a sock a vanilla sock so I shall try to work a bit more on this. And these are my three skeins that I'm using with helical knitting. So, not much to say about that really. Um, be nice to um, get a bit further on that. So, um, yes, there are uh, all the things that I'm working on and because I've had so many things on the go for a while I also feel like I'm I'm getting to the end on some of these um so that's that's nice I I think oh but you know I say these things all the time but I I really would like to do some sewing and um, so I thought that maybe if I finish a few things I'm going to try to not start all the things again um, because I could maybe have a sewing project on the go. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if I can make that happen because it's very tempting to cast on all the things now that I'm at home and with my stash and everything. Um, I have one thing actually that I have been thinking about making and that's using this yarn. I had a bunch of underweight skeins in this um, white with sort of raspberry pink speckles. Um, so I had these three were all like that. And then um, I had leftover dye. I was doing a custom dye of a pink and I had too much dye in the pot and it wouldn't absorb. And then I had, I thought, okay, I'll put another skein in to absorb all the dye. So I put one of these in and I got it 
is sort of over dyed in a light, lighter pink. Um, and then I still had another one um, of the white ones. And when I had these two, I thought, oh, that'd be fun to sort of fade. I thought, oh, okay, well, I should make an even darker one. So, um, yes, I, I did that. Put this in a darker pink. So now I have this fade. And they're not full skeins. So there's only, I think there's 100 and a few more than 150 grams maybe is that right I can't remember but there's not three full skeins maybe it was 180 grams or maybe it was 260 I should check that again um, but I thought I could make something similar to this and just do a, a fade or the Fenmont that I was meant to wear today, but disaster. Uh, that has the sort of fading in the original pattern. I just did a, a block color version of it, but um, I thought I could do that. But I have to figure out if I have enough for an adult size or if I should make it for one of my girls. But um, yes, I'm sort of on a mission, not really um, on purpose, but just to clear my studio of all those partial uh, skeins and hand dyed skeins that are not making it into my shop for any reason. Um, yeah, so using up those would be also a great, great thing for clearing things out a bit. <laughs> Another thing that I have been thinking a lot about, and it's also one of the reasons why I've started working on my blanket a little bit again see here I have all these mini skeins uh, four mini skeins partial mini skeins um, and lots of small partial skeins as well I've been so tempted to do a blanket like crochet or some some sort of modular blanket but I don't think that I can follow through with it and I thought okay well I have a blanket on the go if I, <laughs> if I can finish this monster then maybe I can let myself um, um, work on a, another blanket project. But we'll see. It's definitely perfect for wearing on top of my legs, sitting out here in the cold. Um, yes, so they're the things um, that I, I've, I've been up to. Okay, well, it's time for me to get back to my kids and back to the day. And um, I hope you're all well and looking after yourself, taking care, doing things that you enjoy. Um, sun's come out here now. It's going to be a lovely day. Um, yes, yeah, so I, um, again, hope you're all well and looking after yourself. And um, hopefully you enjoy just catching up with me and some knitting and rambling. And um, I, I hope to be able to sit down and talk to you again soon. Until then, um, take care. Bye.